What's up, Pyro crew? Mike here. And today I want to talk to you about this little gem. This is the AMP Quick Plug Crimper Tool. Um, what this thing does is allows you to quickly take a quick plug end and crimp it to your wire. Um, that's pretty much it, but it's pretty cool. So what I want to do is show you um, how to use it, why to use it, and where to get it. Um, so first off, uh, why would you use this thing? Well, the first reason that I was looking into one of these is because uh, strobes and other ground items that come pre-wired from the manufacturer, um, they always have the wired ends. Um, so what I used to do is just, you know, twist and, and splice quick plug ends to it. And I, I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, so that's a great use for it. Um, another use for it is creating uh, like double ended jumper uh, harness cables for breakout boards. Um, so like these guys right here, you get from Cobra, uh, they have the input and then the five additional quick plug, uh, slots, and they come with these jumper cables. Um, they call them harnesses and they're, they're black. So they're very hard to see at night and they get thrown away a lot. Um, also they are only about what, 10 inches long. So, um, if you need a little extra length to get these plugs out of the rat's nest of wires you might have in a 72 or 36 M. Um, that's a good use for them as well. So you can see, I've got this uh, quick plug end I just plug it in there and then I can take this. Um, and this one's about, you know, 18, 19 inches, um, and get it further away. I wouldn't recommend using the same color as your wire though. So you can see, like I did with this uh, mux board quick split here is I have a bright yellow wire. Um, so that's your best option. Um, grab some bright yellow scab wire, uh, crimp some quick plug ends to it. Um, the mux board quick splits actually don't have the quick plug input. Um, they have the uh, terminal input, but that's okay because you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, that's another good use for it. And you know, last but not least, um, any scab wire that you need to quickly add a quick plug into uh, out in the field. And as long as you got this bad boy with you, it's only gonna take a few seconds. So um, let's talk about part numbers real quick. Uh, this is sold in two parts. So this is the head assembly and the handle assembly. And the handle assembly part number is 58074-1. And the uh, head assembly is 58246-1. And uh, let's go on their website real quick and we'll show you where to get these and uh, how much they cost. So I've got the uh, TE connectivity site pulled up here and this is the manufacturer of the tool. You can see it's uh, a darker blue and that's just cause it's newer. I have an older one, uh, but that's $191 just for the handle on their website. And if you go um, and find the crimp head tool, that one is where you're going to spend the money. So that's $341. Um, so you're looking at over 500 bucks uh, just for the tool, uh, the two pieces. So if you do a little research and look around, um, you can find it elsewhere. I found it for 319 on Newark's site. Um, another good resource is DigiKey. Um, obviously, DigiKey is a little more expensive. You can see $227 for just the handle. And then the head is almost $400. So it's about 600 bucks through DigiKey. Um, DigiKey does have a good resource for the, uh, the quick plug uh, receptacle heads there. Uh, you can get about a hundred of them for 12 bucks. So that's not bad. A um, little bit more research. I found they uh, have one on eBay right now. And that's from Palm Industrial for 350 bucks for both the, uh, the head and the handle. And they are the exact same part numbers. So if you're interested, jump on over there and grab it. So uh, let's talk about how to use this thing. Uh, this one in particular is a little finicky. I don't know if they all are, uh, but what you do is you insert the wire in here and the, and the quick plug in through here. So you take this and you face the open end up and then add it into the side here like that. And then what you want to do is push until you hear a little click. So you can see if I can get the light in there, right? 
that it's lined up with one side. So once I crimp it, um, it'll move over one notch and line up with the other side and then you do it again. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, first, I got this wire here. So I'm going to, this is cool. I don't know if you've ever seen this. See, this has got like a little razor blade in here. You just slide your wire in through there and it'll cut it for you. I've never seen that before until I got this tool. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so now we got this wire split open like that about, I don't know, an inch and a half, maybe inch and a quarter. And now that we've got our uh, quick plug end in there, we'll just take one end and put it in that hole all the way till it stops. Now, when I said this is finicky, um, this is the part where you have to pull back just a little bit, maybe a millimeter, just a little bit on that wire and then crimp it. And then it'll slide over. So we'll come over, try to do this where you can see it. Set the wire in there. Now, what I like to do is kind of just look, look, look down in there to see how far the wire is going in. I don't know if you can see that and then cover it again. And then it slides out the other end and we're done. We have a crimped wire. Now this is not coming off. I mean, you could yank on it. I'm literally trying to open that or break that and it's not, it's not happening. But there you go. Um, that is all there is to it. It's done. Um, some, some people like to take a hot glue gun and squeeze a little hot glue in there. And I think that's a good idea if you're doing a bunch of these, um, especially if you're going to reuse them for like harnesses or whatnot. Um, and that'll protect from any moisture as well as static electricity and whatnot. Just protect those connections. Um, you don't have to, but the next thing that I like to do is do a continuity uh, resistance check. So that's why I've got the uh, trusty multimeter here. Um, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it to the ohms setting down here to 200. Let's move that over. <clears throat> and you'll see here, I have the end here twisted. Um, and that's because we need to have a completed circuit. So with those ends not twisted, it won't, uh, it won't show any resistance because the circuit isn't complete. So what we need to do now is take this and probe each individual side of that. And this is not easy to do while on camera. That's for sure. Uh, so bear with me here. I'm gonna put that end in one end, not in the other. Let's see if we get a reading here. There we do. So point eight ohms, which is good. We want anywhere from 0.7 to 0.1, which is pretty much the normal resistance for uh, an E-match. So there you have it. Um, all right, so I think I covered everything uh, from why to use it, where to get it, how much it costs, uh, how cool this darn thing is, the part numbers. Um, tell you what, guys, if you learned anything new or if you liked what you saw and you wanna see some more, just make sure you smash that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't. Peace out.